is that not an amazing day in the presence of the Lord? Ah, mm, God is going to be doing some wonderful <laughs> things. So we look forward to every bit of it. We look forward Amen. to every bit of it. Hello, Pastor Pauline, how are you? I am doing wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, that's nice. And you? You know, this question of how are you, mm -hmm. Pastor Cynthia is not on, she should answer. <laughs> Hallelujah. She should be responding to that. But the Lord God who is faithful has me kept. Amen. Amen. I am in good hands. You I, definitely I are in good hands. <laughs> I'm telling you, I am in good hands. I'm in good hands. I am in good hands. Um, it is it is a blessing as a child of God. You know, it is a blessing to know that it is a blessing. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. <laughs> it is a blessing. And uh, I am grateful. Hallelujah. You're welcome, everybody. We apologize for starting late. Hi, Doc. Hello, Pastor Lucy. Hi, Pastor Ruth. Hello, First Lady Fua. Hi, Minister uh, Carol Langwe. Hello, sharing. Evangelist Evelyn. Hello, Minister Yvonne Marshall. Welcome. God bless welcome, you all. Welcome. God bless you all. Good to have you on. So, Pastor Pauline, how are the catapult preparations going? exciting all right that's how the preparation the is preparation going. is going great we are yes. looking forward to it with so much excitement um the young people have the with their own breakout session this year so there's a youth breakout session moms dads watch out we have a, a flyer out for the breakout session for the young people make sure that if you're coming with your children they are you, you register their mm. names so that way they are going to be part of their own breakout session. It's going to be intense. And then the flyer is out for the women's breakout session. The shot in shall be intense. Have you seen the flyer for the shot in, the women's shot in? This is for the ladies now. Okay. The guys like to keep their thing in the hush hush. <laughs> but we don't mind it because when, when husbands come back home after... The catapult shot in, we can tell that they had a good time because they are all about action. So we get to see their moves after the catapult. So we know something happened during the catapult. So we are excited about that. But our, our flyer is out for the women shot in. So I hope you're registered. If you're not going to be in the room in person, you can log in virtually. But you have to be registered and your camera has to be on. It says shut in, so if you are in the session, we need to know you're in the room, whether in person or virtually. So if you don't have your cameras on, we will not allow you as someone who is present for the shut in. Those are just our simple rules, and we will be honored if you obey and respect them so we can have a wonderful time together. Interesting. Oh, the men's flyer is on the way. All right, Doc. Yes, ma'am. Shout out to Dr. Noella Anyangwe for all the amazing job she does with our flyers. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, girl. You know what, Pastor We appreciate Pauline, you. I was, I was studying, mm -hmm. and um, you, you were just talking about obeying, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whatever the rules are. And this season we are in has been filled with uh, those kind of conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, one being mentored, one being uh, pastor, mm -hmm. one following instructions and what the deliverables look like. Yes. Uh, you know, and uh, I, I came onto the story. Interesting story, by the way. In the book of Genesis. Okay. And this, this kind of stories are just interesting because you don't really think that obedience 
guidance, instructions, you know, would be that powerful. Mm. But as you go through this story, it is clearly one of those things that you look at and you say, whoa, 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 uh, this is, is, is powerful. You know? So in the book of Genesis, we find you know, how this whole story plays out. Okay, so let's, let's go over here. Praise God. Welcome, Pastor Griffith. Hello, Pastor Cynthia. Bless you, bless you, people. Welcome, Minister Bridget. Bless Omar. you, Welcome. people. So we are in Genesis 27. Genesis right? 20. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. That's why my Bible is open. Yes, ma'am. Congratulations. Right. And, and so let's just pray. Let's just yes, pray sir. so that it doesn't, you know, become one of those things. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. Thank we you thank Jesus. you. We magnify you. May your name be exalted this day as we sit around your feet and learn from you. Thank you for honoring your word. Thank you for helping us. You have indeed done a great deal in moving us from a million and one points to, to where you desire for us to be. And for that we are grateful. We salute your leadership, O oh God. You, we salute your hand upon Thank our lives. God. And we ask, O oh God, that you who began a good work will continue to take it all the way to the end. Thank you, Father. We, we appreciate your generosity, O oh God. You are so generous. So generous. Had it not been for your mercy, then even the very statutes that are in your word would have taken us out. But by your mercy, we still stand. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. May the Lord be praised tonight. May the Lord be praised tonight. May the Lord be praised tonight. You know, you, just the thought of the statutes of God and what they are in getting people to not just be blessed, but to be preserved. Mm -hmm. um, and seeing how often those statutes are broken and how by the mercy of God, we still stand. is you know, sometimes you just cannot fathom that. How many times people have slept off the steering mm. and they still got home and they don't know unhurt. how <laughs> they don't know how it, you know you think about these things because you're supposed to go down for every wrong thing you do but the mercy of god upholds it sustains yeah. it, you know it preserves almost as if god has a a, a, a personality duality God. You know, because he is judgment and he is also mercy. Yes. Almost as if God compromises with himself. <laughs> but it is not a form of compromise. Mm -hmm. But it is that, that right there is the beauty of salvation. That Jesus came to rescue yes. us from himself. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. I don't know if you got that child of God. But God came in the person of Thank Jesus. You, so that he can rescue us from himself. Uh, because seriously, I know we say if it had not been for the Lord, we would have been consumed. But I want you to think about it again. If it had not been of the Lord or for the Lord, we, we, he himself, by his wrath, he would have taken us out a long time ago. But oh, thank God for the death of Jesus on the cross. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. That man who aren't so perfect can still be sustained you, by the blood. Thank you, Lord. By the grace of God. We are grateful. We are grateful tonight. Thank we are you, grateful. Jesus. We are grateful. And I can see, you. you know, even with the story that we are talking about in Genesis 27, you know, some things that are on the line in this story. Now, I'm, I'm just going to read it. Okay. Because sometimes we, we have half-truths. Um, incomplete stories 
and uh, we remember the story as it was told by someone some time back. And uh, we haven't really gone to the Word to read it and really see how it all played out. Mm -hmm. But let's look at this. In Genesis 27. Welcome everyone again. Welcome, welcome. The Bible says, And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called Esau, his eldest son, and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, here am I. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death. Now therefore, take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field, and take me some venison. Wow. What a conversation that a father has with a son. Interesting conversation. And when I was going through this, there's something that kept on ringing in me. How Isaac had spent all of his life to prepare his son for this day. And, and children of God, you can go to the word of God and see the things that Esau did that kept on qualifying him for this day. Oh my God. Right? It's, 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 a, it's a crazy story. I mean, we are talking about having lived all of your life, consciously or unconsciously, being prepared for a certain day. A prince is prepared to be a king. Mm -hmm. But what are the things that the prince does in the course of life mm, to disqualify, to disqualify themselves? So it's, it's a thing. Anyway, um, um, it's like saying a girl prepares herself to be married. A man prepares himself to be married. What does that mean? How does that look like? You know, and so on and so forth. And you, you, you will see something here. By the way, this, this Genesis 27 is being visited. Because you talked about obedience. And you, in talking about it, you said there are a few rules that are going to be uh, in effect mm -hmm. during the catechism. Uh, during the women's shorting session, mm -hmm. people have to have their cameras on because we all have to know who is on and who is not on. It doesn't right. matter if they're in the room or outside. In fact, especially if they are virtual. Right. We have to know because people are going to be talking about some things that require that level of environmental safety. Right. And so it's important that some guidelines are put in place so we know, well, this is a, a, a family conversation. Right, because it's, it's a judgment-free zone and it's a camera-free zone. Um, in this day and age where it feels like everything is on social media, it, it, it cannot, it, it, social media is great, it has its benefits, yes. but it also has a downside to it. Mm -hmm. So we have to find ways of managing that. Right. When, when you are having a conversation with people on a daily basis, maturity requires a, a certain level, level of discernment. There is a conversation that I can have with you because I believe that you're mature to handle it. Right. That I may not have with a child. Because their mental faculty or their, their, their growth process does not require them to be exposed to that information at this time. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm trying to be secretive, but because I'm protective of their growth process. Come on. I have to be aware of that. So discernment will help you you're know. You're protective of their growth. You're protective of their capacity. Yes. You have to be conscious of the capacity Mental of people. capacity. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's an information that someone can have and it instead destroys them. Right. We've seen situations in which somebody gets to have access to s someone else's um, financial records. Oh. And it destroys them, not the person who has the financial records. It destroys a person who got exposed to that information mm -hmm. when they were not qualified to, yeah. to be. So even in the world system, you have prepared to handle right. You have God. you have clearance levels. Mm. There are some people who are not cleared for a certain level of information. Their information will instead harm them. 
you yeah. someone can be exposed to a, a level of information and it brings them into a place of strife uh -huh. or it brings them into a place of competition or it brings them into a place of um negative criticism uh -huh. those are all uh, um, negative things in the person's life uh -huh. if they were not given access to that information they would have been safe in their minds right but having access to that information became something that affected them negatively. Mm -hmm. So we are very conscious of that. Right. And it's the same thing that happens. So even in the body of Christ, most of times people say things like, oh, um, we, we're not talking about these things at church because church people are living in denial. We just want to sweep them under the rug. It's not true. We have to be conscious of the setting. If we have a mixed crowd, you come to service, everyone is in the same room, the men, the women, the, the young adults, the children, the toddlers, the infants, you have to know what information to share in that forum. You have to keep it within the generalities where it's safe for everyone. That is proof of maturity. Right. Then when now you are able to break down the people based on groups, maybe age groups or... or whatever the category you want to use to break down the, the people in different groups, then the, the different groups will determine the kind of information that you can share or the extent to which you can, you can go into mm -hmm. whatever it is you were talking about in the general sense. It's like Jesus speaking to the multitude and he spoke to them in parables. And when the multi multitudes dispersed, he will sit back with the twelve. And the exact same message is he preached to the multitude, he will now break it down a little further with the 12. Right. Clearance levels. Yeah. And so if you look at um, what we are reading here now in, in Genesis 27, it's, it's interesting. So he says, you know, I need for you to do this for me, verse 4. He says, and make me sovereign meat, such as I love. And bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. Interesting. Interesting. All of his life. Now, this is a man speaking to his son. What made him expect the son to produce? It is the training he knows the son has received in the course of all of his yes. life. Child of God, I don't know about you, but there are people who have been positioned in your life to train you for a certain day. Yes. I am just hopeful that when that day comes, you would receive what it is that God has divinely allocated for you to receive. Amen. And first of all, isn't it interesting that your training is your key? Mm. Your training is the key. Your training is the key. I mean, even as I'm listening to this, of course, I'm, I, I, am, I, I know I'm talking to, you know, I'm talking to the, to the Minister Ashley's, to the Minister Nettie's, to, you know, the, the, I'm talking to, I, I can go on mentioning all the ministers on the, on the line, but there is such a thing as the day. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? And this gentleman was informed about the day, on the day. On the day. See that? That was a great thing. It's, someone can inform you about an ordination. Mm -hmm. Someone can inform you about, you know, um, the day when you take your final exams. Like, sure. this is it. Mm -hmm. You can be informed about a graduation and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And, and of, all through your life in school, you were prepared for that day of graduation. And, and think about... It, oh my God, where, where, where are the ministers? Where are the children of God, right? This day that Esau came to, this conversation he was having, because again, I want to say, say this, <clears throat> excuse me. If you go backwards, you would see how often he rejected this day in practice. I know we are coming into the My month goodness. of April where we have talked about some things that are going to befall us. Are you one of those who has heard 
about the things that are going to befall you, the things that are going to come your way. Have you heard about them? And whoever told you, for example, God, you know, told you, and, and <laughs> could it be that you've spent major instances in your life to reject what is about to come in the next few days? Earlier on today, I had a conversation with a, a group of per persons, and we have been working on getting some information. I have been working on getting that information myself, and it, it intrigued me, and I said to myself, hmm, honey, because when the Lord woke me up a few days ago with that information, Had I behaved like I was hearing something valuable, I would not look for it today. Mm. Right? So, God has a way of preparing us for the day. See what I mean? God has a way of preparing us for the day. And, and guys, we are going to continue reading this story and you're going to see how it's going to play out. It is an interesting story. Praise God. It's an interesting story. Yeah, now, let's look at verse 5. Someone came up. Um, Noella is saying something. Interestingly, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about obedience the past few days and how pastors and spiritual authorities are placed in your life for training. You following the instructions of man will help you follow the instructions of God. It's yeah. a training ground. Yes, yes, man. Yes, man. Yeah. Yes, man. So now, let's look at this story. A conversation happened between a father and a son. Verse 1 to verse 4. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, sir. That's how, you know, verse 1 to verse 4, we see that. They look at something that begins to happen in verse 5. Mm -hmm. In verse 1 to 4, we have already mentioned that he has been trained all throughout his life so that he will carry out this particular assignment that will bring about the opening up of the gates of, of, of blessing. The doors, the windows, however you want to call it. But it is supposed to come into his life. Yes. He's been trained. His father knew that he could cook. Mm -hmm. Why? He is his father's son. Mm -hmm. This is important. This is right here. This is very important. This is very important. Child of God, I want to ask you a question. Does your father know you? Because the only way you can know your son is by knowing yourself. So you will not come into a conversation that says, um, I don't know if my son would do this. If you know yourself, you should know what your son will do or not do. Right? And he said, the way I like it. So the, fa he, the father knew <laughs> he must have taught him enough for him to know how he likes things done. Exactly. His father trained him for replica. Yes. Oh, that's the word. Trained him for he, replica. His father trained him for re replica. Guys, I don't know how you've read Genesis 27 before, if, if, if you've read it. How people have told oh the story um, um, before to your hearing. But I want you to see some things that I'm going to show you. Verse 5. Verse 5. Verse 5. Just, this is... Okay, first of all, you read? Yes, sir. Okay. The Bible says, and Rebecca heard it. Mm -hmm. And... Isaac spake to his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. The Bible says, and Rebekah spake unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat. Uh, that I may eat and bless thee before the, b before the Lord, before my death. Now, it is like one of those things that is just unusual. There's another version that I was listening to, that I was reading rather, that says, Rebecca was standing by and heard what, Esau, uh, what uh, um, Isaac had said. <laughs> Interesting. Standing by and heard. But clearly, 
he didn't know that Isaac didn't know that someone was standing and listening. Mm -hmm. And the Bible continues to say this. Verse 8. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice. Who is speaking? Rebecca. This is Rebecca speaking. But I want you to see what the Bible, how the Bible plays this out. Mm -hmm. um, Rebecca says, I need for you to listen to me, my son. According to that which I command thee, go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kid of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. Mm -hmm. Now, if Rebecca was the cook of the family, Rebecca passed on her cooking skills to her sons. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, child of God, that the word of God recounts how Jacob had food. Mm -hmm. And then Esau was hungry. Mm -hmm. He said, please, may I have some of that, your food? Mm -hmm. So this family plays around food. There, there's a lot going on around food, <laughs> right? And the Bible says, in verse 10, And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said, Child of God, I want you to look at this, because we have had the tendency of saying, Ah, Jacob, you're a bad boy. A bad boy. But when you read the story, you see something else about Jacob. It's interesting. The Bible says, and Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father, paraventure, will feel me, and shall seem, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing, mom. Right? This is him saying, I don't know that this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And this is what the mother says. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go fetch me them. I want you to see that child of God. I want you to see this. Mm -hmm. Several children, and now I'm talking about biological children, spiritual children, Children, protégés, mentees, and what have you. You would hear them say, such and such and such and such. I can't or I can. But any of them who listens to what they are told stands out. They will always stand out. Mm. They will always stand out. The mother is saying here, I, I get your point. I get where you're going to. You don't want to be a deceiver. Maybe Jacob had been accused of being a deceiver before. But he was not planning for his father to see him as a de deceiver this time around. But the mother said, I want you to follow my voice. Child of God, do you know how to follow the voice? It is true, you might say, oh, that's a bad example you're using. But you can see the results, right? Mm. You can see the results. If you follow adequately, you will become that which you have been told. That's what I want you to see. Yeah. Good or bad. Mm -hmm. If it can work with the evil, then it can work with the good. Check out the life of the disciples. Right. They followed. Yes. Check out... What the word of God says about um, um, the children of Israel coming out of Egypt and getting into the promised land. The Bible says Caleb and Joshua had a different spirit. The Bible calls them or speaks of them in this wise. They wholly followed, followed the Lord. Lord. To so these two boys, the word of the Lord in the mouth of Moses was the word of the Lord, period. 
That's powerful. That's powerful. There is something that happens to a person who follows. Check out Elijah and Elisha. We do not see anything in Elisha's life that says he lived in the same home as Elijah. Mm -hmm. We don't see that. But what we find the Bible magnifying, and guys, you know, it's amazing. It is right there, the transition between 1 Kings and 2 Kings is clearly described the obedient life of the next prophet. That's it. That translation, that transition between 1 Kings and 2 Kings, it goes boom, 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 boom. Yeah, it is true. Um, Elijah came to the spot, put his mantle upon, upon he, well, then it was called a cloak, put it on, 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 on Elisha, said what he was saying, and went his way, and Elisha was like, this is my opportunity. Mm -hmm. Child of God, do you know your day? Can you smell your day? Can you perceive 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 your day? Especially becomes because the day Elisha was in the farm and doing what he was doing, he did not know that was the day. No, he didn't. It is very possible not to know the day. Gehazi did not know the day Mm. Gehazi did not know life had been going the way it had been going everything seemed to have been okay and that one day he just told himself I can just go behind this man and get these offerings what is wrong with that mm. and the man of God said the same leprosy that was on him is now going to be yours. First of all, the level of demotion that you must come into so that you can take upon yourself what, what disease. It, 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 it's, it's huge. It's a lot of demotion. First of all, when you read the word of God, you will see clearly that once one was a priest, once one was a son of the prophet, once one was the one who poured water on someone else's hands, you know, all of those things, there was a supernatural preservation that was on the person. God was speaking to Moses. And told Moses, I want you to come up the mountain, but tell the children of Israel, nobody come close to this mountain. Anybody who comes close, they will die. But Joshua was with him. <laughs> there was something supernatural that, you know, that protected him. My God. And so, even as God is speaking to us about this, I, I know, I know we are talking about this, but it was just from a little conversation, so to say. <laughs> but, but clearly, God is speaking of these things. Yeah. Has God told you something? Has you know, has a, has a, a person oh told you something that you neglected, you may not know what that day translates for you. And that's what God is saying to us today. We, we have to know these things, right? Mm -hmm. We have to know. Mm -hmm. And Gehazi ended up just being the one who tells the stories. He was able to tell the story, but missed out on the legacy. That's the reason why presence does not mean involvement. Oh, he was God. able to tell the story, but missed out on the legacy. Mm, Jesus, help. And so when we are talking about these matters of obedience and making, you know, and talking about making sure that you're connected and making sure that you, you can hear the voice. I, I know, you know, here in the ministry, we, we say, if you find the person with a water port, you know, you, you find the person with a water port, and, and, and that's, that's powerful. 
you know, you're carrying the water on the head. And this is out of the story where Jesus told his disciples, you know, um, I, I want you to do this. Go here, go over there. You're going to find a man with a water pot in his head, you know, follow him. And you're going to go and see where the Passover has to He'll be prepared. He'll take you to the upper room where the Passover is. Yeah, prepared. he's going to take you to where the Passover will be prepared. Mm -hmm. Now, had they not followed the man with the water pot, they will not have found the upper room. They will not have found the upper room. And today, it's like God is expanding it in a different way. Yes. He says, yeah, I, I get it. But I, 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 are you able to identify the person with the voice? With the water pot. <laughs> right? Are you able to identify that person? Because if you find the person with the water pot and you're yes. not able to follow them, that's it. The destination will not be the upper room. <laughs> no, the destination will not be the upper room. You can you will go to all other places, lower room, side room, but it won't be the upper room. <laughs> it will not be the upper room. So may God help us capture. In the name of Jesus. Okay? May God help us capture. Sometimes, Pastor Pauline, I don't know, the word capture just took me to somewhere else. Sometimes one is driving on the road. And a sticker mm -hmm. gets their attention. Mm -hmm. And something is said. Are you able to capture the voice of God through what is said? Right. Catherine Kuhlman captured something. And it was a sign. End of the road. Mm -hmm. End of the road. End of the road. Child of God. Are you paying attention mm. to voices? So you can hear the voice. I'm telling you deliverance. Ooh. Is available. And sometimes comes from. Strange places. <laughs> I'm telling you that. Strange places. Yeah. There are unbelievers in this world. Right now. Right this moment. That we are speaking. They are not as spiritual as you are. No. They are not as spiritual as you are. Yet, they have the message, the wisdom, the knowledge that you need, child of God, to get to where God wants you to get to. And, 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 and that right there is where, you know, God's wisdom begins to really shake the foundations of culture and, and, and so on and so forth. Because... For many people, it's like, why would God talk to me through an unbeliever? Because he owns everything. Why, <laughs> why else do you think he's going to talk to you using an unbeliever? He can talk to you using an unbeliever. He can talk to you using something that's animate, inanimate. It doesn't matter. He's God. What you should be concerned about is coming into that place where you're sensitive enough to know this is God speaking to me. Live your life not in the shadows. Because the Lord is indeed your shepherd, you shall not want. It doesn't matter what he uses to speak to you. All he wants to know is this. Throughout your life, has he trained you enough to talk to you in the dark? I'm telling you, child of God. God has to have the kind of confidence that we find right here in Genesis 27. What kind of story is this? You know, but it is here in the word of God so we can learn from. Mm -hmm. It is here in the word of God so we can learn from. So child of God, I, I, I can tell you this. I can tell you this. I do understand because of course, it, um, studying Genesis 27, if you're, if you're studying, if you're studying, studying Genesis 27 will some kind of way take you to, to the book of Hebrews. You know, we are admonished in the word of God not to be haphazard. Mm -hmm. Paul was speaking. And he was talking about not being light with precious things. Mm -hmm. Because in the case of, of Esau, he was light. And on several occasions, he totally disregarded his inheritance. It meant nothing to him. He was ready to exchange it for what he was going to eat. And child of God, I'm talking to you this minute because some of you are listening to me. You're ready, child of God. You're so ready to exchange what is coming your way with sleep. I know the word of God, you know, Paul was talking about it and, and, and he talked about it in terms of sin. And that has a place. But do you see that in the life of Jacob um, um, and Esau, Esau would easily say, well, I'm hungry right now. Mm 
-hmm. In fact, Jacob had conversations with him where he said, you know, this is it. Give me your birthright. Mm -hmm. So he bargained his birthright. Mm -hmm. So what is it to me? What is the birthright to me right now? I'm hungry. You can have it. Right? So the events of his lifetime, I don't want to say ill prepared him. He was given several opportunities in his lifetime. You know, this is one of those teachings that if we had as a private Bible study, I will have the liberty of calling some names and I'm saying, you watch out for this, you watch out for this, you watch out for this. But we're kind of here. So I am going to believe God that the one to whom this voice is coming would have been trained enough to throughout hear. to know, wait a minute, this is for me. Mm -hmm. I have been taking heavy matters so light, light that I have chosen sleep on some occasions. I have chosen offense or anger on, mm -hmm. on some occasions. I have chosen, you know, to exchange it, especially consciously. Because mm -hmm. some people have exchanged whatever it is consciously. Mm -hmm. I remember not too long ago, the Lord was speaking to me about something. And um, child of God, I just, I just want you to see this story with me. I happen to have gotten to the point where I could count bigger numbers in terms of money. And then God came to me and he said, don't forget the value of a dollar. It was a stranger's teaching. Remember, I actually shared it. Yeah. And I had to now come to that point where I began to value a dollar. I began to value a dollar, I began to value, you know, two dollars, three dollars, what that means, twenty-five dollars, what is you know what that means, and, and I stayed there and, and so on and so forth. Now, I didn't know the other things that were going to play out in my life later on. An opportunity comes into my life that was going to make me count little amounts of money, ten dollars, twenty dollars, thirty dollars. $40, $50. And I found myself saying, I've counted thousands of dollars as in a reward, or a salary, or a paycheck, however. And some of you listening to me right now will be able to relate with this. Okay. It's like saying, my paycheck every week is $1,000. What do I care if there's an opportunity that will give me $50 a month? Mm -hmm. I'm used to $1,000 a week. Mm -hmm. Someone would say that. And it's like God began to say to me, he said, son, it is the little things that compound into great things. Yeah. Yeah, if you think being up there gives you the right to neglect the little things, you may fall sooner than you imagine. Yes. And there are some of you who are listening to me right now and you are saying, oh, please, been there, done that, bought the T-shirt. And God is saying, okay. So buying the T-shirt doesn't mean neglecting the T-shirt. Right. Right? Because you still have to value the days of small beginnings. You have to value the things that are getting you to wherever it is that you're going to get to. Yeah. God is talking to us about value, value. Because if you do not value the voice, you will not follow the voice. That's right. The mother said explicitly. He expressed his dislike for this project. Mm -hmm. he, he, he expressed the dangers of this project. Right. He said, I will end up with a curse, mom, not a blessing. I mean, I'm trying for you to relate, you know, just make it a day-to-day -day kind of thing, okay? Mom, I, this, this will get me in trouble. And shall we go further? Mom, you're going to die too. And I'll be the one who stay down here with the curse, with my crazy brother Esau. <laughs> I don't know what is going to happen to me, right? So he expressed it in that way. 
So he, he, he showed the dangers of the plan. Mm -hmm. He looked at all of this and the mother said to him, son, let me paraphrase that. Is that okay? I'll paraphrase that. I see the danger. I see the trouble. I see that your life is on the line. And I see that with this move, you can all be ruined. But son, despite all of those dangers, if you would just listen to my voice, you will end up exactly where I see and project that you will end up. I was in my office today and I was writing down some things totally unrelated. Totally unrelated and I heard a statement. Grow up so you can measure up with the potential. I was like, whoa, mm. what did I just write? What did I just write? What did I just, what, what did I just write? So I began to talk to the, to the Holy Ghost about this statement that I just wrote. He said, grow up so you can measure up. Because when we talk about potential, right? When we talk about potential, we are talking about energy that's resting. Yes. Right? Potency that's resting. Untapped resources. Untapped resources, mm -hmm. right? That's what we are talking about. And then clearly... I could see that God was saying, <laughs> I have kept all of this and there isn't any more than this that I will have for you. But you are now supposed to grow up and come to where this is mm -hmm. because it's yours. And so, child of God, God is speaking to mm -hmm. us using this story. If you would recognize the voice and just follow the voice. Especially the voices that speak to you and that show you the full plan. Do you see that? Yes. Pastor Peter, I want you to I want you to camp a little bit on there's a statement you made and I want you to camp a little bit there. Mm -hmm. You talked about God having the ability to speak to us through animate and inanimate things. God having the ability to speak to us through unbelievers. And I want you to come there for a little bit because several times there is a scripture that is taken out of context for and some and sometimes it leads many children of God astray and that's someone someone is a beautiful scripture it says blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly mm -hmm. nor standing in the way of the sinner nor seated in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the lord and on his in his law doth he meditate day and night it goes on to talk about him being like a tree planted by the rivers conclusion whatever he does will prosper sometimes that scripture is taken out of context to suggest that you can only take from someone who is born again because blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I want you to camp there for a little bit because there are, I believe there are many things that God wants to say to born again children of God. And sometimes in our world and in our circle, there seem not to be anyone who is qualified to transmit that information mm -hmm. to you. And God has to use somebody who may not be in the believing fold, but is qualified to transmit that information. I'll give an example. I believe that God wanted to preserve his people in Egypt per his divine plan and purpose. Right. But at the time in Egypt, there wasn't anyone qualified to execute the, the, the preservation plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He had, God had to have sent Joseph ahead of time through events that were not so nice and then gives Pharaoh a dream if he had given that dream to Joseph, Joseph did not have what it takes right. to command the resources of Egypt. 
in such a way that there will be seven years of plenty and grain will be stored mm -hmm. in order to preserve the people when the seven years of famine would come. So God had to give the dream to a heathen king. Mm -hmm. Okay. In our walk with God, sometimes born again children of God are so saturated. It, it sounds like an oxymoron to say so saturated with the word of God that they don't seem to see anything else. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's a weird statement. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to qualify it with examples. We have seen situation, situations in which we were even talking about it earlier on today. We have seen situations in which someone is so engulfed with confessing scriptures, I shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord in this land of the living. They are supposed to do that, rightfully so. Mm -hmm. But because they do that, they think having life insurance is acting in the negative. It's canceling out their faith work. So, if, if the people that surround them are all people who are talking like them, then it means that they are in the midst of a bunch of people who don't li have life insurance. Yeah. It will have to take God speaking to that individual, maybe using a colleague at work who is not born again, to say to them, you need to have life insurance. And having life insurance does not mean you are about to die tomorrow. And life, having life insurance is not a deterrent to your faith declarations that you shall not die believe. Because a lot of believers, and many of them are listening to us tonight, a lot of believers think having life insurance means you don't have faith that you will live up to 120. There are many people who will not have car insurance if it wasn't mandatory. Because to them, having car insurance means you are trying to suggest that you're going to have an accident. There are many children of God who will not take their health care seriously if a, the pastor simply says, I think you should change the way you eat. But they have to take it from a medical doctor. Because if the pastor tells them, I think you, ch you should change the way you eat and, you know, add exercise to your routine, it comes across as though uh, the pastor is backsliding. He's not speaking faith anymore. Because faith should suggest, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. You burn the cal calorific whatever in the fufu and just eat it. However number of times you want to eat it a day. Mm -hmm. You know, so being able to come to this place where we are able to hear the instruction that is primarily coming from God and God being able to use even people who are not necessarily born again to speak to us and we being able to hear still the voice of God. Are you able to hear the voice of God through your medical doctor when he is saying your cholesterol level is a kind of way. This is what I want you to do. I want you to change your diet like this, like this, like this. And you're not thinking, okay, taking that instruction means you are no longer in faith. Where someone can say to you, yeah, I know you, are, you, 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 know you believe in the power of the blood of Jesus, you plead the blood of Jesus, and you declare faith scriptures, but you need to look into your taxes and find a qualified person who can handle your taxes? But that part of you that says, no, I can do it by myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have a court case and someone is suggesting to you that you should hire a lawyer. Okay. A legal mind who is professionally qualified to represent you at court. Well, and you say, oh, look, Jesus is my advocate. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Jesus is your advocate. Mm -hmm. But you are hiring a legal professional. Does that mean Jesus is no longer your advocate? Mm. 
it, does that suggest you are not in faith if you hire a legal professional to handle this thing? They have gone to school. They know the lingo. They know the law. But you show up at court haphazardly because Jesus is your advocate. And you make a shipwreck of your life. You're, not, you're making light of serious issues concerning your life in the guise of being in faith. Because this is a conversation that we need to have with the children of God. Right. Are we able to identify when God is speaking to us, even through people we don't consider to be so spiritual, as spiritual as us? Because we know the scriptures, we can declare by the stripes of Jesus and I'm healed. And you're looking at a, a Hindi doctor talking to you. <laughs> and you don't think he is qualified to speak. He didn't come to you to talk to you about your Bible. So you, you are not measuring his qualification based on the Bible. Right. You are measuring his qualification based on what he went to school for. Is he medically qualified to talk to you? When are we able to identify who to go to for what kind of counsel? And where is it appropriate for a child of God to take counsel from someone else, even if that person is not born again and is not a distortion, is not um, an indictment upon their faith walk. Right. Because a lot of people will say, well, you know, I'm not supposed to take counsel from the ungodly. But your, 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 your physician doesn't have to be born again. You're, you're, you're not going to him for Bible study. It is the... So that isn't even, that is hyper-religiosity. Okay. All right. Break that down for us because we need so, it. So hyper-religiosity is just exactly that. So we must have an understanding, number one, that Jesus did not come so that we would have buildings that don't have foundations. Okay. He came so that we may be whole, spirit, soul, and body. I wish above all things, 3 John 2, that thou mayest prosper and mm -hmm. be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Mm -hmm. Right? These things I have said unto you, because yours is the kingdom. But for those who are without, they are spoken in parables. Mm -hmm. And he was asked, uh, so is this when you come to restore your kingdom? When is the time? Mm. When is this thing going to, going to be? Jesus did not come to a spiritual world. He came to a natural world that had a, a spiritual framework. Mm -hmm. And so many people want to dwell in the spiritual framework. And totally, totally dismissing the fact that they are still in the natural world right. while they are at it. And so this conversation right here has taken me to lots of scriptures as, 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 as you were speaking. Okay. The very first one that I was taken to, and I find that sort of ironic, is Hebrews 11 okay. verse 31. In Hebrews 11, verse 31, the Bible says, By faith, the hallowed Rahab perished not. Just right there. Mm -hmm. Perished, perished not. not. With them that what? Believed not. Believed not. I, so I want you to take note. Perish not. Believe not. So... If one believes, they will they not will perish. perish. If they don't believe, they then they will be perishing. It is just like that, straight up in the word of God. So the Bible says that by faith, Rahab the harlot, perish not with them that believe not. When she had received the spies with peace. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go back to the word and you begin to understand what really happened here with Rahab. Some people that she did not know. Mm -hmm. But that she had heard of. She took wisdom from these people. The most 
insane prescription ever. Take a scarlet thread, put it down your window. What, does, <laughs> what is that? Right? Yeah. And she believed it. And she survived. Now, this is my point. Rahab took from them. And there are other people who had the information but did not take it. Yes. Because the Bible says, and others believed not. Mm-hmm. That is interesting. So, this is what we have to understand. There is one who is qualified to say a thing. Yeah. There is one who is qualified to say a thing. I don't think it can be any better said. than the way I've heard it being said to me. Yes, the door is closed. But do you have the appropriate knowledge to keep the door closed? There are things that can still go through a door that is closed. Do you know how to stop those things from going through a door that is closed? No, how? Right? So, we have to understand there is what it means to have the capacity for something, Mm -hmm. what it means to be qualified for something, Mm -hmm. understanding that Jesus came so that we may be saved in our souls, right? So now we have the salvation that we have come up to, but it becomes interesting when salvation meets with laziness. Mm -mm. It becomes interesting when salvation meets with complaining. Okay. So... There is a lazy person, there is a complainer, there is a murmurer. What, what about when salvation meets with ignorance? You begin to say things like this. I've been washed by the blood, I need not to wash. <laughs> so you don't take showers because you've been washed by the blood. Yeah, yeah. you begin Lord, to say I'm those kind of things because you don't <laughs> understand that salvation is a spiritual commodity that opens you up to a better life here on earth, Right? Yeah. Now, the word of God says in the book of Ephesians that God has blessed us with everything mm-hmm. that pertains to life, life, mm-hmm. life. And so we want to magnify the word life, mm-hmm. life, life, life. There is one who has a, a, a deformity. In their fallopian tube. Mm-hmm. And they receive a word. None shall be barren in the land. Mm-hmm. They go to their physician. Their physician says. We have seen a distortion. With your fallopian tube. It's not uh, like this. Or it's, it's meant to be like this. And so on and so forth. And the physician says. We are going to follow this procedure. To correct this. Mm-hmm. And the person says. No I'm going to go pray. God will fix it. Now can God fix it? Yes. But why is it that God had not fixed it before that day? Are you able to see that it was the the information God gave that brought you to this place where now the, you the know. discovery was made and now you know? Right, because that's that's the disconnect right there. That's the disconnect. And that's why I'm saying that a whole you know salvation, what, what happens when salvation meets with ignorance? Hmm. When, when salvation meets, uh, meets with with an on an, an uneducated mind. Right. What happens when salvation meets with laziness? What happens when salvation meets with arrogance? Right? right? What happens? What happens? What happens? The mercy of God has to come into that life using different other doors. Right. Because that's what, that's what this is all about. I remember having a conversation with someone today. I said, faith is not just the substance of things hoped for, but faith is also a dialect. So, we have French, we have English, we have Spanish, and we can go on and on mentioning Mandarin. You know, we can mention Swahili. We can mention these things that people speak. Mm -hmm. It's their dialect. Faith is also a dialect. Mm -hmm. In other words, when God is speaking, it doesn't matter what words he's using. He speaks in his dialect. (laughs) Whatever he says has a positivity to it. So if the child of God would see that 
go wash your eyes in the pool of Siloam doesn't mean Jesus doesn't have faith to wash your eyes right where he's standing. Then, oh, that that's right good. there, yeah. you know, takes you away from where you miss your miracle. Right. That's the reason why we are saying, child of God, do you know how to follow the voice? Right. God forbid that you read the book of Acts and you come up on this other side and say, Father, I'm believing you right now. I, I want to be like Philip. I want to be like Stephen. Right? Because they had moves of God in their lives. And then you go somewhere and stare up something and they start stoning you. And you say, no, I'm like Stephen right now. <laughs> okay, okay. Meanwhile, the voice of God is whispering in you, run. <laughs> Are you saying I have faith? I have faith. Yeah, I, I, because usually we see these things in dreams, right? God will give someone uh, um, uh, uh, an information in a dream, and then they wake up and say, hmm, I bind the blood of Jesus. Yeah, you. I get it. The blood of Jesus is there, and it has power. But you have to ask yourself a question. Is he saying to me, keep going, though there is the blood, or because there's the blood? Or is he saying, don't go, though there is a blood? Mm -hmm. Because you have to know which one it is that God is speaking to you. Without which it will be salvation meeting with ignorance. Or one of those other things that we are mm -hmm. talking about. That's the reason why we have to come into spiritual accuracy. God, spiritual accuracy. Help us, Lord. Okay. Um, someone comes to you and talks to you about a job. You say no. I'm not going to walk because money came from a coin, from a, a coin came from a fish, and God is going to give me my own fish and give me a coin. That's fine. You can go ahead and do that if that is what God said to you. If that is what God said to you. But do you even realize that God was speaking to Peter, who was a fisherman, right. telling him, go catch a fish, and the first fish, there will be coin in his mouth. Right. Jesus used Peter's profession to provide for him. Right. And you don't want to... You, okay. There, there are, there are <laughs> countless people, <laughs> Pastor Pauline. There are countless people. So the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want to. Right. <laughs> there are countless people right now, this very minute as I'm speaking, who are looking forward to April 1st because there's a major thing that is going to happen financially in the world. The entire world, April 1st. And so, all believers are positioning themselves. Pastor Peter, you see, that is where I really... God forbid that children are praying. Uh, are you only listening to this? There's a major financial event that is going to be happening that... doesn't happen like in every 50 years and sometimes even longer. It is going to be happening over the next few days. But you see, some people don't even know about it. And even those who know about it, I'm talking about children of God now, some of them will be praying. But you know how I know God is interesting? He doesn't talk to them. He stays mute. In all of the kabashing. The Kuru merchandising. He doesn't say anything. Because he said, I have put these people in the world. I've put them before you so they can talk to you about these things. But your neglect of them is an insult to me. We want to Google their life first to see if they are born again, if they speak in tongues before we listen to them. Well, they enjoy. are not coming to teach us the Bible. The person who has been positioned to give you financial literacy doesn't have to be born again. It's not the Bible they are coming to teach you. Right. They don't have to have gone to theological college. That's not why they are in your life. Nope. Or that's not why God is positioning them to talk to you about your finances. Right. They are professionally qualified to talk to you about your finances. And they have financial information to give you. Are you able to hear the voice and right. receive financial literacy from that individual so you can apply it to your life. They are not coming as your pastors to talk to you about the Bible. No. Can you take medical advice from your doctor without trying to figure out whether he's Hindu or Sikh? It, it's of no consequence. 
You are not going to them for Bible study. You are going to them for medical reasons. Right. Can you receive the instruction and recognize that God is speaking to you through that individual in that moment for something that will require, will determine how long you live in the earth. Yes, you're confessing that you shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord in this land of the living. Yeah. Do you recognize that if your flesh is separated from your spirit man, you will not be able to carry out that assignment God has upon your life? It's, 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 it's you need your body to function in the earth. Yeah. And whatever it is going to take, the wisdom that is necessary to enable your body function in optimal capacity, the medical personnel has that information to give you. Are you able to hear it and receive it? Are you able to hear? Do you, do you spend more than you make and you... You know, just keep saying, you know, the birds have nest. You know, I, Jesus takes care of the lilies, lilies, so he will take care of me. You know, birds don't have a bank. They don't store anything. Why should I have a bank account? There, there, there are things that believers say, <laughs> and you can clearly see that they've taken scriptures out of context, and they call it faith. Now just so when a child of God dies, we all have to gather and contribute money to bury the person or send the cops to wherever because they didn't have life insurance. Mm -hmm. they, because there's something to them. Having life insurance means you are trying to suggest that you are about to die. Well, the Lord our God is helping us. Um, we are being helped. Amen. We are helped. And even this right now is, 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 is God's mercy coming to us through his word today. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> there are people who have told themselves that we, they want to give birth naturally. And that's okay. What does that even mean? I know. And Which one many is people's lives have been jeopardized because a man stood on the side and said, we don't do that. The baby has to come out the way God designed that the baby will come. Hey! Your wife is dying. And you're preaching the gospel of, what is that now? I don't even know what that is. And, 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 and you would see how in many of these cases, some people stick to their belief system. And, and lives have been lost. They are telling you the baby is breached. The doctors are about to do a C-section. You are insisting that the baby must come out natural. And to you, natural means your wife has to push. How you push a breached baby? Yeah. And you are still sitting in the corner, rabba, shaka, patada, bosha, the baby, they should push. You have to listen to the professional, the medical professional who is telling you, yeah, is it, is it, is it possible for God to cause the baby to turn? Oh, yes. yes. It is possible. But what if that is not the route? Are you going to permit the medical personnel do the C-section to save your baby and save your wife? Or are you going to stick to your natural? Because those are the things. When you say the baby must, you must be born natural, what does that even mean? Right. Right. And there are people who have gone through intense situations because... They tell themselves, okay, accepting a pedural means you don't have faith. Mm -hmm. Because you must push the baby. Hey, if you, if you take a pedural, it means you are weak. You don't have faith. You want to come out with, a, according to us believers, we put it in this words, testimony. You want to come out with a testimony that suggests, I was in labor for 11 hours, no epidural. Like, your own child has three horns because you had no epidural, and the other <laughs> child has... Two. One, because they had a... Why? Right. Why? There are certain things that we engage in as children of God, and we, we wrap it around scripture. And at the end of the day, there is no scriptural sense to it. Pastor Pauline, a few days ago, there was a video that went viral in some parts of the world. In this video, 
a woman is being paraded in some part of Africa, naked. And of course, they are saying all kinds of things to her and so on and so forth. But now this is the crazy thing about mm. that video. The story is her husband died in the cause of uh, husband and wife intimacy. And so, of course, she's been accused of having used oh, that, that is witchcraft. to kill her husband. Now, that was uh, a good proof of ignorance. Now, something happened. The reports show that he had a cardiac situation while that was going on. But this is the woman now being paraded, naked, I mean, like, not wearing a thing. Just the stigma of that kind of thing happening because there is no knowledge. No knowledge. No knowledge. And think about, I mean, I, 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 was, I was going through some reports, you know, people were talking about this. Statistics show that there are many men who have died of that kind of death in hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. And there's an explanation to it. It is very clear that when salvation meets with ignorance, the results are terrible. Because you meet a very strong and adamant head that will not budge for any reason. <laughs> In the face of information, they are still right. When you're trying to say, okay, we get it, but let, let's do, the, no, this is what I believe. Now, <laughs> believe it, believing that does not have information as a support system is pride. Mm. It is pride. Believing that does not have information as a support system. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. Someone had asked me a question the other day, and uh, the, uh, this particular child of God asked me, he said, why is it that I put my expectation on something and build my expectation, build my expectation, and the thing does not come through? I asked, man, because your, your expectation was just an emotion. Yeah. It had no substance it to baseless. it. It was baseless. You have to, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what field you look at it. Faith is the substance mm -hmm. of what you've been hearing, what you've been listening yes. to. If you don't build it up with what you're listening to, it is an emotional excitement. Positive emotional excitement. And guess what? You blow it up one of these days. So if you have been experiencing um, um, disappointment, you may want to check that out because that might actually be something that's ongoing in your life, mm -hmm. that you're building expectations out of space and there's no one to hold it up for you. And so whatever you built comes down crashing. Child of God, God has My put God. everything in this world so we may enjoy from it. Yeah. Do not insult the unbeliever. He might just have your answer. Yes. He might just have your answer. Learn to put a clear demarcation between what pertains to church, what pertains to faith, what pertains to heaven, <laughs> right? And what pertains to little elements in life. I'm not going to go and eat at that restaurant. It does not belong to a believer. I am not going to uh, invest in stocks because the owner of the company is whatever, whatever. Oh, Lord. What, that's what a, has that, that, that's what has that got to do with anything? What has that got to do with anything? The clothes you go to the store and buy, you don't even know who designs them. No, you don't. <sighs> the food you're eating, do you know where it was, where do you know it was where it's grown. coming from? You don't know where it was grown. Do you know who put that seed in the ground? You don't know. So, yes. So, so first Corinthians, uh, 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 I mean, the word of God, it's, it, it's, it's funny because the Bible says, okay, some are affected for conscience sake. Are you one of those who is affected for conscience sake? <laughs> that is deep that you are affected for conscience sake. It means you're rolling by the information you're hearing. Oh, 
Really? He's an unbeliever? Oh, then we'll not put money there. The other day I was driving in Vineland, New Jersey, and I said, oh, where are all of those protesters? Dumb people. You, so you're, you're, you don't realize in your being that you stay there protesting, the guy is making money. But if you go and educate yourself, you might come to the point where you throw him out of that place. Let's fight where the fight needs to take mm. place. Right? Let's fight where the fight needs to take place. We, we saw in scripture the other day, a poor man's wisdom is not heard. Oh, he saved Lord. the city, but nobody cared. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. Wow. First of all, we took a tangent today. Sure. Do that right? The catapult is coming. It's going to be deep. <laughs> <laughs> it is going to be deep, guys. Amen. It is going to and be deep. And those are some of the things, if, even when it comes to family dynamics, you know, what, where do, do, we, do we know where prayer comes in and right. where action comes in? Mm. You know, you're praying that God should save your marriage. Are you, is there corresponding action to that? Because if, as a wife, I am praying that God will save my marriage, but I talk to my husband like he's a dog, I remind him how useless he is and how good for nothing he is. I emasculate him every opportunity I get. Mm. I don't know how that prayer is supposed to manifest. Right. On the flip side, you know, for the man, you're saying God should save your marriage, and yet you treat your wife like she's trash, mm. like she's a doormat for you to just walk on. Like she's three, you just need to command her and she obeys and say, yes, sir. She has no opinion. And you are praying that God will save your mind. I totally ne neglect the, the, the attributes, the, the, the ingredients of a relationship. Right. What it means to what relate. It means to relate. And these are all things that God has given us in the word. There are principles already laid out in the word as pertaining to these different institutions. If we're not going to follow the principles, but we want to pray, we are making God a liar. Yes. We are making God a liar. And those are some of the challenges that we need to face. Whether it comes to your finances, it comes to your relationships, whatever the sphere of influence we are referring to, all of these things have governing principles in the word of God that if we follow them, we will not make a shipwreck of our ministry. Scripture talks about us being able to carry ourselves in such a way that the ministry is not blamed. There are so many things that happen and the unbelieving world is blaming the church or it, our unbelieving family members are blaming church and you're going to church as a re reason why you are acting stupid. <laughs> and to a very great extent, they are right in some cases because we have taken scriptures out of context and it, we behave as though, because now we have the Bible, we no longer think. But God expects us to think through the word. He didn't say we shouldn't think at all. Think through the word. What does the word of God say? Yes, you're praying and believing God for your finances. Right. Are you engaging biblical financial economic principles? Mm. He says anybody who folds his hand and sleeps, a little sleep, a little slumber, Poverty will come knocking. Okay, so that scripture already tells you that as much as you're praying for a financial breakthrough, you have to engage your hands to walk. Scripture talks about God blessing the works of your hands. Whatever you do will prosper. He gives you power to make wealth. But if you just sit in the corner and just pray uh, in the name of Jesus, miracle money, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but Pastor Pauline. There that, is a place where God can give you miracle money, right. but that is not his da daily operation. That reveals the disconnect. The point here is the disconnect, the disconnect, the disconnect. Right. In, in Hebrews chapter 10, right? In Hebrews chapter 10, let's look at this. 